really lovely to speak to you all today. Congratulations on the fantastic series. I really enjoyed it. Thank uh, it's you. It's brilliant. It's got fun. <laughs> um, so perhaps I could start with you, Jonathan. Uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the story of Primo is all about? What can viewers kind of expect? And what is it like for you to read the script and decide to come on board with that story? What was the kind of appeal for you to get involved in it? Great question. The series is about a 16-year-old who named Rafa, who is being raised by a single mom in San Antonio and her five brothers. So that alone, I think, will set the comedic tone for anybody coming into the show. And the, the process of reading the script, I, I'm kind of skipping around here, but the process of reading the script was, it was incredible because it, it is truly an ensemble. And so there were all of these characters and this flurry of, of action and emotion and things going on. And it, it happened to keep it grounded and be comedic at the same time, which for me was incredible. So and what was the second, uh, what was the second part of the question? Kind of what made you want to get on board and what was the appeal? What was the kind of appeal of that story then for you? I, for me, it was the, the writing really. I, I, the fact that Shay Serrano and Mike Schur were attached certainly doesn't, <laughs> um, it certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, but it was it was the writing and the the family dynamic that had this these sort of comedic undertones underneath, and um, yeah, being being a part of an ensemble, it's it's always fun to be able to do that with the group of talented people that I'm sure you've seen at this point. It was a wonderful experience, the best of my career so far. Ah, oh, that's so cool. I'm sure they really appreciate hearing that as well. <laughs> um, so, Johnny, uh, you play Uncle Rolly in the series, and I think it's fair to say you're kind of like this goofball, and you kind of remind me of Jerry from Friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I believe they, they call you the Mexican Batman in this. Um, so what was that like kind of stepping into those shoes and running with a character like that when, you know, you've got a bit of a history of kind of playing a lot darker and intenser roles uh, previously in your career? So I couldn't hear the, the first part of the question. My, my apologies. Oh, okay. Um, so you play Uncle Rolly in the series. And yeah. I think it's fair to say you're kind of like this goofball, you know, kind of Joey from Friends character. Mm -hmm. And they call you, you know, Mexican Batman in this. What was that like kind of stepping into those shoes and running with a character, you know, when you've had a history of playing a, a lot darker and intense roles than this? Yeah, um, I'm definitely something different than I typically play. Uh, but uh, actually, the the character kind of came um, in an acting class, honestly. Um, yeah, I used to do like a lot of comedic improv, and I love creating different types of characters. And this is a character I created in class, and it was kind of loosely based on a friend of mine from high school. And, uh, you know, I kind of had toyed with the character for a while. And then when this audition came up, I just felt like after reading the script that this this character I had kind of made could just kind of live in this world. Um, so I sort of implemented that character into it. And then it evolved over time just because, you know, it changes being on set, working with different actors, getting writing and things like that. Um, and it kind of turned into sort of what you saw. So it, it was a true pleasure and it, would, it was a joy, you know, because uh, a lot of stuff I've done has been like very heavy at times. And um, you don't really want to live in that too often. You know, uh, you definitely need some light in your life. And uh, Roly is a lot of light and a lot of life. And uh, <laughs> getting to work with these guys too, you know, just being on set every day, getting the joke. And it, there truly is nothing better than coming every day to tell a story and just laughing every day. Like not knowing what's going to happen. Like it, it doesn't get any better than that. And... Um Ephraim, for you, obviously stepping into this role as, as Mondo, um, you also suffer a health scare that really bring the family together in this um, and take the storyline. How did you kind of feel to take the character on of him and, and play this role? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of a lot of these processes got started even long before any of us showed up on set. Uh, the audition process in itself was character development. And so there was a lot of, of feedback from Shay and from Mike and from the producers um, on, on what kind of direction they were looking for, what might work. And then also not just individually developing the characters, but developing in a way that they would all sort of work together, right? And fill different voids in this young adolescent's life. 
Um, and so I was lucky enough to be cast in the role of Mondo, who, as you mentioned, yes, does does seem to be this kind of grounding force in a in a very chaotic uh, environment. Um, I, I I I don't think that was a, a far reach for me. I tend to be pretty pretty chill in general. Um, <laughs> I, my my high strung stints are are limited, and so it was it wasn't super. It wasn't too much of a stretch to just chill out a little bit. I mean, obviously, all you guys filmed all eight episodes in Albuquerque, which must have been really fun, just kind of being away from, you know, the norm and all being together and sort of becoming this family, I guess, in your own right, by, by all being together in this brilliant ensemble cast. Um, what do you think were some of the highlights or some of your favourite moments from set? I mean, there's so many brilliant comedy moments through it. I mean, and... and brilliant scenes, you know, in the fairgrounds and on the roof and of just so many. What was some of the kind of standout ones for you individually? Well, I mean, I, in my case, of, I am from Albuquerque and we shot here, so oh, I got okay. to play, I got to play host. Um, and it was a good little, little balance, right, of like that feeling that they all got to be away from home and all of the, the sort of detachment that goes with that, all of the, the opportunities for growth and exploration in literal and figurative senses. Um, I don't know, there were so many moments. I, I think for me, like I, I, the, the moments that you remember with comedy are, are sometimes the, the painful moments. So the, the literal pain in one of those scenes was when Johnny here um, rips Mondo's shirt off Oh, yeah. On the first on the first take, he ripped a <laughs> giant chunk of my scalp and hair off. It was um so I and and that is hilarious now, but man, that really hurt. I'm turning red right now, literally. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that was uh, that was part of the scene. Uh, you know, an actor prepares. Uh, he wasn't ready for anything. <laughs> it was it was very method, yeah. Right, Johnny, did you keep it? That's what we want to know. Did you keep it? It's actually, in my drawer right now. Do you guys want right to? On. No. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I uh, the very first uh, on the the first episode in the pilot when we were sitting down at the table for dinner at the end of the at the end of the episode, I think it was the first time we had all been together in a scene, and that was amazing, and and it was magical because you knew in that moment what was going to what was going to continue that the, the dynamic was so real and it was so intense and beautiful and funny and funny uh <laughs> it, it was it, it really it really set the tone for for the rest of the filming process uh, for the rest of the series it was great and yeah. go ahead go ahead no, and for you, Johnny, what was your kind of favorite? I mean, I, I can't even pick one, to be honest with you, but I was just <laughs> gonna, just to kind of piggyback off of what he said. Uh, you know, for me, there was just so many uh, scenes, especially the ensemble ones, when there was all, all of us were there, where we had to, you know, stay locked in. And I just have a tendency to break your <laughs> plot. These guys will probably, they'll probably say I broke a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and there's just so many moments of me breaking. And also because a lot of times they would give us uh, potentially like new lines right on the spot, or I would improv something or, or something would happen and someone's not ready for that. Or somebody says something ridiculous and I'm not ready to, to hear that. And they just start breaking out laughing. And it's like, ah, it's the best. It's the best <laughs> the moments are the ones that you remember. So um, yeah, it was just so fun. So fun. I mean, obviously, you know, the integral and central part of this story is family. And then you've got all these other things that go on around it. And we're seeing, you know, a guy a coming of age story as well. And um, what do you think are some of the key themes um, that kind of run through this? And what do you hope viewers will take away from, from this? To any of you? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think one of the common themes throughout the show is that relationships are hard right? Um, sibling relationships, nephew relationships, whatever kind of relationships, they take a lot of work. Um, and ultimately, ultimately, I think we should all come down to the, to the same conclusion that the people who are in our lives are there for a reason, and we keep them in there for a reason. And so, you know, there's much more output than input, but there's definitely a lot of input <laughs> required to keep a relationship uh, sane and stable <laughs> and, you know, um, <laughs> And sometimes even like flow, flowing with the insanity as well, and and just you know 
enjoying the ride. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just family, you know what I mean? Um, the central theme, of course, you know, you've got Rafa, who's, uh, you know, going through the typical things a high school kid would go through, and he's getting pulled in so many different directions by uh, his family. And I think that's why it can be very relatable for uh, um, for a lot of people. It's just, you're always going to have all these voices coming in, you know, and sometimes you just got to listen to like what makes sense to you. Um and so I, I think that the central theme, of course, uh, just rooted in the relationships of it, because there is a lot of absurdity in certain situations that happen between us. But at the end of the day, we're just a family and every family has its issues and its problems. So we can all relate to that. And uh, it's kind of how you get through it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> love, yep. love and family, love and family. There you go. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for speaking to me. I think we're out of time, but it was a real pleasure. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed it. And I know everyone else will too. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you.